Shalom. How you doing, brother? This is, uh, again, we, uh, we're sitting here, you know, uh, talking about this reparations thing that we've been talking about. We didn't pass this thing all over the world, as you've seen from our special that we had. We didn't been, and uh, we was at the city council meeting. You saw that. We presented this proposal there. We took it to Durban, South Africa. We met with all our people, all the people from our Pacific tribe there, uh, called the Limba, across South Africa, the, what, you, uh, what you call here black Jews or black Hebrews or whatever you want to call it, people of the book. And uh, we sat down and we dealt with all, you know, we dealt, we dealt with all basically from here to uh, New York to, uh, uh, to Frisco to, uh, the, again, uh, uh, to Africa. And we, now we're going to be we're going next to the Middle East, up into Israel, because out of all the nations that signed the resolution saying that we deserve reparations, the only nation that hadn't signed is the United States and Israel. So this is why we're right now stepping up our, our communication, our cry to the United States government saying, let us go with our reparations. So the fact is that the United States government has been able to s drop food, ah, drop food on the enemy to the degree which is, 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 is what, $300 million worth of food. Or at least what they say, $30 million, I believe, worth, worth of food. And it's 30, they say it's 30 million black folks here in the United States. So they could have gave each one of us exactly what we asked for, that reparations money, to leave with our money, along with Thomas Jefferson's bill being proposed, because as long as we've been here, we've been fighting the enemy, constantly asking these people for reparations uh, uh, up to these last couple of years. Now, war has started. We've been in every major war that the United States have fought, have fought in, because we are citizens of that country. And in every war, we're not treated like we're supposed to be treated. There's always the, the division between us and them. So we have one brother here today that was uh, in uh, uh, the Gulf War. You know, he was there you know, uh, on the front line, you know, fighting a young man, you know, fearless. To the degree in which he was decorated, he got a medal. And, uh, and, and, and once you hear his story, you're going to want to give him a two medal or three medal, you know, to the degree in which uh, the, uh, what the brother had to go through there. And also the, 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 the fearlessness in which the brother had to even deal with that situation. But the fact is, so uh, now we're going to introduce you brother. Brother. This is brother. A Rock, I call the brother A Rock. What's your whole name, brother? A Rock, A Rock, Rashid Williams. A Shot Rock, Rashid Williams. Brother, hey, how are we doing, man? It's good to have you here. All right, pleasure to be here. Man, I just call, I'm just used to calling you A Rock, man. You just right. like a, a, a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so, brother, uh, you know, uh, this show is centered around reparations and black people on the front line, and you one of those brothers right now that's on the front line in the current war, and we asking for reparations. And the fact is, brother, about you being here today. And even by you being man enough to fight for this country, because we both love this country. Exactly. You see, and the fact is, is that, but uh, again, uh, it doesn't appear that our government want to treat us as equal citizens. So, what's what's your story, brother? What do you have to say in reference to the reparations and in reference to what's going on? And just tell a story, for one thing, about what happened with you in a in in, uh, in Iraq. You was in Iraq, right, brother? Uh, yes, yeah, from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia to uh, Iraq. And on to Kuwait. It was a it was a mission that we had to accomplish, and um, we uh, dropped in like May of uh, uh, 1990, and we stayed for like six months. We left uh, like that Christmas or that New Year's. Um, when we first got there, it was it was like we prepared for the ground war. The ground war hadn't started yet, so it was a lot of preparations, you know, before then. Uh, but then the ground war started. And we advanced on, you know, and when we advanced, it was like, it was a thing where they had us 
believe in. And to this day, to a certain degree, you know, it's, it's supposed to be about unity. You know what I mean? Everybody is supposed to be looked upon as green and not black and white, you know. But um, being in the military for three years and eight months, you know, I started to see that um, the same problems that exist out here, they exist within the, the confines of the military uh, structure also. So we're not, all, we're not all just green, brother Dan. We're not all just green in the military that just the issue of black and white is this everywhere we go right regardless to where you go I mean you can go to a different country or whatever it's still gonna be there right within the military uh, for the simple fact that you got guys uh, white guys Chinese guys some maybe Saudi Arabian guys within the mi within the military who never really had the opportunity to uh, rub elbows with with the brothers you know what I mean mm -hmm. so so they they still look upon you as what what they were raised to look upon you now. As far as the military teaching us about uh, brotherhood and being in the same foxhole with somebody that might be the one to save your life, so you have to learn a certain degree of trust there, but you know, all in all, the same problem still exists, brother Hoshua. And, and the, the fact is, brother, you, you put yourself on the line and on the front line, I understand it was a situation that occurred that you you was on the front line without any uh, without a weapon. Right. So well, what, what happened with that, brother? It was a point uh, while well when the, after the ground war started that um you know and I've never been able to tell this story to nobody so I just want to take a break and um, thank you for the opportunity you know and, and allowing me to be able to stress this so that people out there can see that it is you know it's a saying that whatever's done in the field supposed to stay in the field but these are issues that I think the world should know about because all they get to see is what they see on the media well see the fact is but we have this show and this is this show is cutting the hearts of people specifically because we want to show the real issues what's really going on here because our people been here for 400 years exactly. we've been 400 years and we've been fighting in every major war and the fact is is that the, this country regardless if that if we if we have these issues between a marriage, we are married to America. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and I understand the fact of, of, the, uh, of the, the military code of honor, of keeping this within the family. But the fact is that there is an American family. Mm -hmm. And there's a family that's greater than, uh, the, the military family is greater than the American family. It's called a family of truth, mm -hmm. a family of honor. And we are men of honor. And, and God-fearing men go beyond country, go beyond personality, it goes beyond anything because that's a family of the world. Right. So the fact is, is that right now we're dealing with the issue of reparation and we're dealing with the issue of equality. And what we're saying is that up until this point, America hasn't been able to treat us equal. Right. And the fact is that if we sit, if we continue to sit back and assume that just because we can sit on the, in, on the toilet stool with someone at this point, we're, we're equal. equal. You see what I'm saying? Then then that's a deception. We're deluding ourselves. Exactly. So our program is saying, give us our reparations to money to leave. Exactly. And so the whole point, your whole story, as you said, you want to take a break, your whole point of saying, and, 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 and as these pictures that we're showing, you can see the slaughter. People die. And you could have been one of those people oh. that would have died without a weapon. Right. And you know, that was a really a, a serious issue over there to the point where it's, um, I had to have an, a congressional investigation sent down on my whole division while I was over there. Mm. See the, the the course of events that took place, and it's not we're not gonna say that it was a it was a white and black thing. Mm -hmm. It was a thing where one of my own brothers, you know, uh, one night in the midst of the in the middle of the ground war, uh, while we were in a tank, uh, M113, you know, it's the smaller tank. You know, we got into a verbal argument or. Words were exchanged, and this is the same. Uh, my, the guy I'm speaking of had that same rank. The staff sergeant. Staff sergeant. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, he called me outside the tank one night uh, during this ground war. We was stationed. We had stopped in the midst of the battle. You know, and it's so dark outside you can hardly see your hand in front of your face. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, he was so.